Um, so this title had not changed. It was given about two years ago, talking about non-coding RNAs. Um, but there is a slight change where my institute has changed. You can see here, I'm currently at University of South Florida. I start a center for regenerative medicine. But uh, over the past decades, over decades, I was uh, in Boston, really enjoy the environment, collaboration with Bill Poo and others. Uh, it's hard decision to leave Boston, beautiful place, but uh, we also welcome many of you potentially come to the warm Florida. So I'm going to talk about uh, non-coding RNAs, microRNAs. As you have already been educated by previous talks, I heard many of them microRNA genes, just like our uh, mRNA genes encoded by the genome, gone through multiple steps of transcription processing to make those functional non-coding small moleculars that regulate the gene expressing and function post-transcription RNA. So we know microRNAs are very important because our earlier work uh, using genetics, we uh, specifically denitrile dicer, which is an enzyme essential for microRNA processing and maturation. When we did that in the heart, we found that all the animals die postnatally with severe cardiac defect. The expression of many contractor protein genes were not present. And we also did similarly uh, denitrile dicer in neural crest cells. In this case, use the one one cray Again, we got a very severe phenotype, as you can see, 100% penetration or the mutant animals uh, display both craniofacial and cardiovascular defects. That really indicate microRNAs are so important. We and many others over the past uh, over a decade have uh, discovered and uh, recognized many microRNAs, put them into different uh, events during the heart development, with modeling and diseases. So I just want to quickly share with you a couple of very short stories of what we did learn from studying those microRNAs. We have characterized several tissue-specific express microRNAs. We are also uh, being puzzled by the specificity of microRNA and their functions. So one study we actually focused on uh, this protein called TRPP. Uh, TRPP later on was shown to be a cofactor of a dicer regulating the processing of microRNAs. We generate the cardiac specific knockout of uh, TRBP, and uh, we observed there was a very severe cardiac defect over there. You can see uh, both the ventricles and atriums were dilated, and you can detect the defect in those hearts about two weeks after birth, you pretty much, again, this is 100% penetration. At the end, my postdoc did not have the genotype in those hearts. He, he just looked at those, no, these were mutants. This is a histology confirmation. After a series of studies, we know that the TRPP is essential for cardiac function. And, but we did not know the mechanism, so we performed small RNA, RNA seq And to a little bit of, to our surprise, we did not detect too many microRNAs differentially expressed, which is in sharp contrast with what we previously shown in the dicer studies. When we denitrate the dicer, majority of microRNA process was blocked. But when we knock out the TRBP, we only observe a very small fraction of microRNA were disregulated. In particular, we saw MIR-28A and 499 and 504. So here is just the qPCR tachyman and the northern blood demonstrating the downregulation of 28A. Fortunately, previously, we studied this MIR-28A and we generate the transgenic mice to overexpress this microRNA in the heart. What we previously reported that overexpressing of this microRNA in the heart was sufficient to induce cardiac hypertrophy. 
So we decide to uh, really investigate whether you put back to it A in this TRBP knockout background, whether you could rescue this uh, cardiac defect. Without giving you too much detail, but here is just a crossing. You can see here is a regular expression of 28A. Here is our TRBP knockout, 28A with gun. Here is our 28A transgenic mice. We got about a four to five fold of overexpressing. This is a compound mice. Basically, you restore the level of microRNA 28A comparable to the, uh, the wild type mice. And again, here is the verification of those. And again, what we observed was this 28A transgenic itself uh, triggered the hypertrophy, TRPP knockout. Again, you got those both ventricle agent dilation phenotype in those rescued animals, basically the heart uh, restore back to the normal morphology. Without telling you too much of the molecular mechanism, uh, but we showed in this study here is our TRPP knockout mice, but if you put back to it, a, those animals were fully uh, rescued. They can survive uh, all the way to uh, their normal uh, life. So we published this work quite a few years ago, and in this study, basically, we demonstrated that actually in the heart, the expressing of tissue specific expressed microRNAs is tightly regulated. In this case, TRBP is essential to regulate the level of 28A. And then the function of 28A is mediated by a downstream target. In this case, is a transcription repressor SAC6. We have performed studies using uh, knocking down with SAC6, that showing rescuing of TRPP knockout phenotype. We also overexpress SAC6 in wild type that recap the TRPP knockout phenotype. So we demonstrated that this pathway of TRPP regulating the expression of 28A and then 28A repress the expression level and the function of downstream target SOX6 really play a very important role in the cardiac function. I don't have time to tell you what kind of phenotype or the gene program being changed, but there is a so-called fast and, a and a slow twitch myofibro gene expression program. So we are continuing to study this and trying to understand how those microRNA specific recognition really contribute to the pathology of this. We also study another set of microRNAs. You have heard quite a bit of those microRNA. That is 1792 cluster. It's been well studied, particularly in cancer field, showing it's been uh, uh, amplified in cancer and recognized cell proliferation. So a former post uh, Jing Hai Chen decided to study this. Again, we took a genetic approach. We initially deleted 1792 in the heart using NCAC 2.5 CRE. Basically, we got a smaller heart, reduced the cardiomyocytes number. Conversely, uh, we made a transgenic mice to overexpress them, particularly use a CRE driving system, overexpressing the heart, and then we got a humongous bigger heart. That is a hyperplasia increased cardiomyocyte. We did this in postnatal hearts, use alpha mesin heavy chain. And again, you can see very big heart. And uh, we use inducible mercury mer and uh, still achieve the very similar uh, dramatic increase of the cardiomyocyte number and uh, increase the heart size. Mechanistically, we show that P10 is one of the downstream targets recognized by this cluster. So we continue this line of study trying to figure out which member of the 1792 microRNA cluster contribute to this function. There are six members of them. We narrow down to mirror 19A and B. In, in this follow-up study published several years ago, we uh, introduced the 19A and B uh, in those uh, uh, animal and uh, we induce myocardial infarction and we ask whether overexpression of this microRNA would be able to 
uh, promote myocyte proliferation and uh, protect the heart from the uh, uh, degeneration? And the answer is yes. So again, this work has been already published, just showing a piece of data. Here you can see cardiac function here. If you introduce those microRNA mimics, the cardiac function is really preserved. And you also can see the, uh, the scar size was also reduced in the study. I mentioned to you that P10 is one of the targets, and you also heard from uh, Stephanie talked about two days ago that uh, P10 is also a target of MIR-1992A. Um, so we ask whether P10 play a direct role in cardiac myocyte proliferation or cardiac regeneration. And to approach that, again, we generate um, uh, conditional knockout for um, P10. And here we use the tamoxifen induction system to uh, study. And what we found is if you denitate the P10, here is use mercury mercury, uh, to denote P10, the cardiac function is better, and there is less dilation in those animals. And we carefully look into the myocyte proliferation, showing that if you knock out a P10 in cardiac myocyte, the proliferation is showing in EDU labeling uh, for SWH3 or aerobic B staining, they are all enhanced. Um, then uh, we try and uh, perform transcriptome. Analysis, we show that actually multiple signals were dysregulated, in particular the ECM receptor uh, interactome was downregulated and the muscle actually contractivity was enhanced. And we perform additional analysis suggesting that if you knock out a P10 specifically in the cardiac mouse site, uh, sorry, multiple signal pathways potentially were dysregulated over there. So that indicates like a micro is in this case, uh, mirror pin A and B, and uh, the downstream gene P10 directly involved into the proliferation of cardiomyocytes and uh, play a role in the uh, cardiac regeneration. And uh, here is our additional data we show in the histology, and we also trace those uh, regenerative cardiomyocytes. Again, this work was also published a couple of years ago. So I will take the last few minutes just to switch gear for two reasons. Um, inspired by a talk about two days ago, talking about how interconnectedness communicate with the cardiac myocytes, regulated cell proliferation and regeneration. So I thought I want to share one long, long uh, RNA story with you. Uh, also, another reason I want to share this with you is just try to inspire some of the young students or postdocs here. So this story actually started many, many years ago when I myself was a PhD student. We clone a gene, uh, we named it XIN in Chinese pronunciation, that's the xin, that's the heart. So it turned out the Expression of shin is very specifically restricted to cardiac and skeletal muscle. This is in situ hybridization showing a chicken embryos. And it is a component of the interconnected disc. All right. So later on, uh, my former mentor uh, and we worked together, knock out of this gene. Then almost 20 years later, he retired. Then he handed those mice to me and said, hey, Dazu, you discovered those genes, you studied them, now you have to continue to study. So I said, okay. I got those mice in my lab, we started to study this again. And when we knock out the shin beta, those animals die postnatally, their heart is much smaller. So we were trying to figure out why that was, and we we were not smart, so we decided just to do an RNA-seq to see what kind of gene program was changed. And this is the uh, shin beta, it's downregulated. Actually, after we analyzed the transcriptome, we noticed that the YAP pathway was dramatically downregulated, which is probably not totally surprising or a little bit surprising to us. 
So we uh, again compare our transcriptional data with uh, another set of data generated by Bell Poo, my collaborator. What we analyzed was from our RNA-seq data with the array data, we noticed that many of the um, upper regulated genes in the YAP overexpressed system were down regulated. Conversely, the down regulated genes were upper regulated in our SIM beta knockout. So then we ask whether uh, really um, SIM beta set upstream of the YAP pathway to regulate the proliferation of the cardiomyocytes. We decided to put in uh, back uh, YAP to see whether that could rescue the SIM beta knockout phenotype. This is what we did. We use AAV, inject into this control, and the uh, SIM beta knockout mice. We could achieve about 40% of rescue. And uh, we reason the other part we did not achieve is probably because the delivery system AAV, we were only express them in the later stages. So anyway, the bottom line is if you put back YAP, you were able to rescue the SIM beta knockout phenotype, and we expanded this work and looked at the cell proliferation was affected. And finally, we perform another set of RNA-seq and then look at the gene expressing in our knockout mice, in this YAP overexpression mice, and the rescue mice. Basically, we saw this pathway is particularly involved in cell proliferation was restored in this case. So that indicate that indeed the YAP pathway setting downstream of the SIM beta, which is an interconnected disk that regulate uh, the cardiomyocyte proliferation. So this is our working model in a wild type of situation. Uh, SIM beta interact with the many interconnected proteins regulate the signal through the YAP pathway. If you don't have the SIM beta, then the pathway is dysregulated, and that result in the dysregulation of mass cell proliferation. So I would like to thank um, many of the investigators who have contributed to this work, and I've also been very fortunate to have many collaborators work together, and of course the funding resource to support this. And I will show you one more picture or two more. This is just before we move out of Boston. We were in pandemic. And this is our new group in Tampa. Thank you so much for your attention.